Having a baby was life-altering for me. I'm the youngest child in my family and was used to being taken care of all of my life. But when I had a son, I knew how it would all be turned on its head. But who knew that my start to motherhood would be so terribly rocky? Hi, I'm Gwen, and at the age of 26, I had my first child. My son Heath was everything to me and my husband Hugh. From the moment I heard him cry in the hospital, I knew I was going to dedicate my entire life to him. After all, that's what parents do, right? Well, it doesn't go that way for every parent. This is where she comes in, Hugh's mum, Trish, who had recently gotten divorced. She'd come to stay with us. She wasn't in the best of shape mentally, and had nowhere else to go. This was the second time she'd gotten divorced. First it was Hugh's dad, and now her ex-husband who she married soon after. Trish had Hugh when she was very young, and the divorce made things messy between him and his head. When I married Hugh, I found out that Trish had just had another child. It was very surprising that she was able to have a child at that age. As it turned out, her marriage was falling apart again, and they thought they could save it by having a child. So she and her ex tried very hard to have one, and eventually succeeded just for the divorce to go through anyway, and she lost the custody battle because she wasn't in the best state of mind. So what are you going to name him? Oh, I bet he looks like a Raymond or a Carlo. Trish was over the moon when we finally brought the baby home from the hospital. She'd hang around his cradle at the hospital and just stare at him in awe for hours. I was somewhat happy that she was around, but I also felt that she missed the daughter she won't be able to see grow up. Those are pretty names, Trish, but we've already decided on his name. Without asking me? No fair! But tell me! I giggled and said. His name is Heath. Heath! I love it! Little Heathy, can I hold him? I gently laid the baby in her arms. She'd handled more babies than I, so I trusted her with Heath. Hugh and I smiled as she played with the baby. A little while later, Heath started crying, so I figured he was hungry. Here, let me have him, he's hungry. Oh, nonsense, he's not hungry, he just wants attention, don't you, don't you? She leaned her face into my baby and kept trying to play with him as he cried. I looked at Hugh confused and he got the cue. Mum, I think he's not smart enough to do that yet. Let Gwen take care of him. She doesn't have to, I'll take care of him. Gwen, go grab some water for me, won't you? I've got this handled. No, no, Trish, please let me have the baby. Hugh will grab the water. You never listen, do you? This baby is not hungry at all. His tummy is full, I can hear it, see? She shook the baby like he was a container. That's where I slightly lost my nerve. Heath started crying even louder, and so I managed to snatch him away from her grip. Trish reacted oddly by trying to hold on to him, but I did it anyway. She made faces, but kept herself later that day. This was just the beginning of her odd and eccentric behaviour. She would always try to keep playing with Heath, which was fine with me. But to do it even when the baby was sleeping? That's just straight stupid. It would take me hours to get him to quiet down and go to sleep, and she would waking up the moment I looked away. She took no responsibility and just kept playing with him. She wouldn't respond to him crying, and if she did, she would just lay him in the cradle and walk away as if he would stop by himself. She insisted, All babies ever want is attention. Food and water always come second, so don't feed him at least for an hour after he starts crying. That's when he gets hungry. Sometimes it's two hours. I'm sure you're right about older babies, Trish, but Heath is barely a few weeks old. He can't stay that long without being fed or having proper sleep. Oh, you new mothers think you know everything. No wonder kids these days are so spoilt. She would always make silly arguments and refuse to attend to the child. It was like she was using him as her plaything, keeping him away whenever he wasn't being fun anymore. I decided to talk to Hugh about this, and he wasn't very happy with the way I was talking about his mum. He'd never been around her when she played with Heath except for that one time. He'd usually be at work while I was on an unpaid maternity leave. I wish I could have had paid one, but my employers weren't very kind. I'd already spent my twelve weeks of paid leave, and now I was exceeding them. Hugh had to work overtime because of this and wouldn't get much time at home. Look, can you please try and get along with my mum? 
She's been through a lot, and that's probably why she wants to bond with Heath. I do get along with your mum, as long as she's not acting weirdly around my kid. Do you know, last night I woke up to him crying, and she was just standing over his cradle staring at him. I almost had a heart attack, Hugh. She said she wanted to play with him, but because I wouldn't be okay with it, she didn't. She was just standing there looking. It was scary. I know she can be a bit strange, but that doesn't mean she's going to hurt Heath or you. Just be a little nice and persuasive and she'll melt away. She's easy like that, soft-hearted, like you. I really don't know about this. Heath was too young for me to appoint a nanny to take care of him, and I can't take him to work when I do get back to it. I was a barista with a local cafe at the time, and I didn't know how long I could do without going to work. I mean, just Hugh working can only give us enough to make do. At a point like this, I was worried about the future. Originally, I loved the idea of handing him to Trish to take care of him while I was away, but now I was realising how bad of an idea that would be. The other day, I was playing with Heath in my arms trying to get him to sleep. Trish had taken a nap in my room because, well, we only had one bedroom. We'd installed a makeshift bed in the living room for her to sleep, but it was too busy in the day. I was spending time taking care of the baby when I suddenly started hearing loud noises from my room. I took a peep in to see Trish stomping around as she walked, looking like she was thinking something over. She noticed me looking and I jerked away, but she quickly swung the door open. "'You think I should talk to my lawyer again?' she asked abruptly. "'Talk to your lawyer? For what?' For my baby, like the one you have, I think I can have her back if I try really hard. Maybe I could file a lawsuit against Tony and prove that he's not a reliable person for her to grow up with. Tony was her ex. He'd got custody of the child. I felt sorry for Trish around that time. She was clearly in a terrible mental state, but I had to be the bigger woman and warn her of the consequences that'll come from actions like that. Trish, that's a reach, and even if you manage to prove him incapable of raising a child, you won't get her. Because that means both parents are incapable or unable to raise the girl. She'll have to go through the adoption and foster home system until she, the day she turns 18. But then you can adopt her. As soon as she goes for adoption, you can get her in and, and bring her to me. Everyone gets to be happy then. You can keep yours and I get to have mine. Trish, no offence, but you sound like you're starting to lose your mind. You need to relax and let go of this whole baby stuff. You need help. Are you calling me crazy right now? Really? Me, the mother of your husband? Do you know what I've done to raise him? The sacrifices I've made just for you to walk in one day and take this baby away? He's my baby too. And since when are we talking about Heath? If you want your child back, the only way to do it is by being real and legal. Maybe you should get some help and then prove that you're capable of having joint custody. Don't lecture me. You're just some barista. You managed to catch my son's eye. You're no one. You won't even make a good mum. Not like me, anyway. What's with you? Where are you going with all this? We let you stay in our home because you had nowhere to go and this is how you're talking to me? I'm really sorry life hasn't been great for you. But this is no way to help it. Lashing out at me won't help. Shut up! Shut up! I'm leaving! She screamed her lungs out at me and left. For a moment she came so close I thought she was going to hurt me or Heath, but she didn't. The custody decision had clearly hit her hard enough to mess up the way she thought. It looked like it was getting bad and Hugh wouldn't even listen to me. I told him the same day what happened and he got mad at me for letting Trish out all on her own when she wasn't thinking right. He didn't believe me when I told him she'd been thinking about the whole baby thing. Later, she came back home. Said she'd been sitting on a park bench all day when it had just been a few hours since she left. She apologised to me quickly and receded into my room to take a nap. Later, she asked to help me put Heath to sleep. But I was cautious this time around. I was not about to let my baby in her hands without supervision. Things didn't get easier after this. There would come a time when I would need to get rid of Trish for good. It all really took a turn when we were taking care of an asleep heath and Trish said, How much? What? How much do you need to spend to care for a baby these days? Oh, uh, well, the diapers, the other care accessories, energy, cradle, all of that costs a bit, say around a hundred for the first month, give or take, if you're lucky. It works out with a bit less than that. 
Then, baby proofing the house after the baby starts walking or crawling either costs a bit, or calls for investment in creativity? Why? Just wondering. If you have something on your mind, you can tell me. Oh, nothing. Didn't used to be so expensive back in the day when I had Huey. I'd still not hesitate to have a baby, though. They're complete angels. Until they start crying. <laughs> but yes, I get it. I'd give anything for little Heath. So would I, Gwen. So would I. I'd be willing to give up anything for our baby. Our baby? She was part of the family, so I didn't mind that, but it was just the way she said it. It felt oddly uncomfortable. Anyway, I didn't pay much heed to it. Days passed pretty quickly. Trish started going out somewhere regularly. Every evening at around five, she would leave the house all dressed up and with her purse. There was no way she had started seeing someone new at that age, so I cast that doubt aside. I imagine she was just going on walks, trying to look good as she got better. Honestly, we were quite supportive of things. Her playing with Heath had also become somewhat normal. She no longer acted weirdly, would give me the baby whenever he cried, and also helped make his food and buy his diapers every once in a while. I was so relieved that she was finally feeling better and more like herself. I was considering leaving Heath to her when I started going to work again, which was going to be soon. That was until I heard her playing with him in the living room this one time. I'd been taking care of him all day and was tired out. I tried drifting off into sleep and a while later, when I was still lucid, Heath's wails woke me up. I heard him cry and as soon as I got to my feet, he became quiet. Then I heard Trish. That's a good boy. That's a good baby. You're mine, okay? You're my baby. And Mama's going to take real good care of you and we're going to go flying away to a nice place where you'll have nice toys to play with. Don't you want that? I wondered how much of what she said was true and how much was for play. It sounded like she'd managed to make Heath quiet for sure. When I came to my senses, I realized that his cradle had been moved away from my room. Now, how did she do that without waking me up? The cradle wasn't very heavy, but the thought of her moving it without me realizing was interesting. When I moved into the living room, my heart skipped a beat. The cradle had been modified, and she'd hung massive Christmas balls on top of it to distract the baby. It looked pretty, but the problem was they were made of glass and could have fallen on his face any time. I quickly rushed to him and picked him up quietly. What are you doing? He's enjoying it! Trish, where did you get these from? The Christmas balls? I found them in your storeroom. I thought he'd enjoy them. Trish, those are really heavy Christmas balls. Not for us, sure, but for the baby they are. How did you tie them up up there? Looks like they'd fall on him at any moment. Hey, 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 what's with all of this constant accusing? I got the baby to be quiet and you're still not happy with me? I really appreciate him that you got him to be quiet. I promise I do. I'm so happy that you're getting along with him, but these balls are dangerous. His older plastic toy wheel that was on the cradle wouldn't hurt him if it ever fell. How did you even get it down? I thought it was attached to the cradle. Oh, I ripped it off. Doesn't take much. I think this is so much prettier. I don't see the problem at all. I understand, but please, let's take it off, okay? It could hurt him. Don't put the old one in. Even now, it looks too weak to hold anything. Trish made a face and pulled the Christmas balls away. As soon as she touched them, two of them fell straight into the cradle and left an impression on the bedding. That's where my child could have been. I see that her intentions were good, but again, the way she chose to do things wasn't okay. She left us to be in the living room and ran away into my room to sleep later. She began getting a bit detached from me afterward. Every morning she'd go out and not come back for hours. Every time I asked where she was going, she'd reply, Just the post office, I'll be back soon. The central post office was a bit far from our place, but not so much that it'll take a whole day. She continued whispering strange things in Heath's ears whenever she had the chance to, and she smiled at me weirdly when I was around. I was getting a bit uncomfortable, so I opened up to Hugh again. Again? I told you she's trying to get better. Why aren't you being supportive? Hugh, she still acts oddly around him. Telling him he's her baby, saying her own name again and again so he would say it first, and you already know about the whole Christmas balls thing. I'm concerned. No, you're overthinking this. She's taking care of our baby. Yes, the whole thing was a slip-up, but you handled it, and 
She won't do it again, okay? And you need to help her get to the post office for whatever reason she's going. I've asked. She just says she'll manage and goes away and doesn't come back until evening. Hugh, she's obviously not going to the post office every day. Why would she? Because she used to work there and has friends there. Maybe she's gotten herself a part-time job. Then why wouldn't she tell us about it? I don't know, okay? Look, just relax and stop keeping an eye out for my mum. She's innocent. There's no need to incriminate her. That was it. I kind of lost it when Hugh refused to believe me, no matter what I said. The time for me to start going to work was coming closer. I knew this would happen sooner or later, so I just decided to get it done. I got us a baby monitor without letting anyone know about it. When both Hugh and Trish were out for work or whatever, I had it installed into the wall in a way that no one could see it unless they were trying to find it. When I started going to work, Trish started staying home. Most days seemed normal. She'd take him away to play and then put him back and sleep. I was working only half time, so I'd be back before it was too late every day. But one day, I heard her talk to my child. Oh, we're going to fly away, Heath, me and you. Mum has been working so hard at school teaching little kids like you would be some day. Oh, Mama has so many plans once she runs away with you. I heard Heath giggle and coo in the baby monitor as she picked him up and span around the room. My baby, oh little baby, do you like spinning? Do you like it? Of course you do, of course. We're going to go far away from your little cradle. I'll get you a new one with big shiny balls on it and you'll have a pretty mum unlike your mum. And we'll make Daddy run away too. Yes we will, yes we will. What was going on here? She continued spinning around the room for a little while and then... When she finally sat down, Heath started crying within moments. She put him aside on the edge of the bed and held her own head in her hand, as if she'd just gotten vertigo just playing with him. I swear my soul almost lunged out when I thought Heath was about to fall off the edge. She just picked him up again in time and put him back in the cradle. I tried! You keep crying! I'm not giving you any more attention in my house! You'll learn discipline from the get-go! Children these days, I swear to God! She said and slammed the door just like that. I was starting to get concerned. I'd recorded the whole footage and considered sending it to Hugh, but I had to make sure I wasn't being delusional. That day, I went home early, worrying for my child. Trish opened the door for me, looking all worn out and tired. She yawned and, without saying a word, went back to sleep in her bed in the living room. So I rushed into my room and quickly fed Heath first. He cried for a bit, but then fell asleep again. He wasn't quite taking a liking to the bottle just yet. Once things were quiet, I locked the room from the inside and began searching. Trish always kept her big red purse with her every time she went out. I had to find it. After rifling through my room for almost an hour, I found nothing. Where could she possibly keep it? Curious, I went outside and just then, I saw it hanging from the coat racks. I grabbed it, making as little noise as possible, and lo and behold, she'd been speaking the truth. She had a teacher's ID card for a school and a plane ticket in there? It was scheduled for the day after. I was blown away. This woman had been conspiring to run away with my child? I kept both things to myself and sent the video to Hugh, asking him to come home as soon as possible. This can't be real, oh for God's sake! Still think I'm overreacting? Hugh held the ticket and the ID card in his hand after watching the footage. He was completely dedicated to his mum, but now everything had become clear. Trish had worked for months on a salary, so she could make these arrangements. She clearly needed a lot of help. Hugh didn't have a word to say in his defence, but he said that we'll need to call my father-in-law, his dad, Jonah. Jonah picked up the call quickly when Hugh dialed him. The conversation was quite saddening, but one thing was for certain. We had to get rid of Trish. She did not belong in the house. You think you should leave her in a retirement home? That's what I do. I don't know. I think she needs to be put in a psychiatry care first. So, the bottom line is, you want her there out of the house for good, yes? Yes, please. Okay, well, I'll come over to talk to her in person. Let's get started. Jonah had been around when Heath was born. He and Trish would butt heads over the smallest of things when they were around, so it was a bit uncomfortable, but he showed up anyway. Hugh and Jonah talked to Trish, and there was a lot of crying and yelling. He's my baby! No, oh, he's my son, Trish. You need to get out of here before we have to forcibly remove you. 
Oh, I'll see how you remove me. I had lost my marbles by then. Trish had done so much to piss me off that I wanted her out of our lives for good. You will never set foot in this house again. Just go away. Keep your hands off my son. Enough, enough, the two of you. Mum, please don't make this complicated. Come with us. The fighting continued for a while. I finally decided to just let her go into a retirement home for good. The people at the nursing home said that they'd give her some psychological help as well. I didn't care any more. I tore up the plane tickets in front of her and called the school she worked at to let them know not to have her close to any kids ever again. I may have overdone some things in my anger, but it was all necessary.